Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And tonight, we've talked about Trace in all different categories. Tonight, we are focusing on Trace and Studio. Yeah, I think we really wanted to drive home the idea of being able to use Trace independently. It's its own tool. You can use it standalone with Origin, directly with Origin, like we showed last week. You can also use it to send files to yourself to use with other digital fabrication tools like laser cutters and vinyl cutters. We showed you that two shows ago. So if you're interested in any of those, make sure you take a step back and, and watch those shows. Uh, but today we're going to show you how to use Trace with Studio, which is our simplified digital design tool for craftspeople. Yep. Uh, we've really tried to drive it home that you do not need one to use the other, but uh, we made it really easy to use them together. So. And there are some really powerful things that you can do with Studio, like using Shapeshifter, for instance, like arranging multiple files together to form one larger file. And we're going to do a few demos today that show you those things and more. Um, before we get started, for anybody who's new to Sessions, you know this is our live show that we do every other week, and we just show you how to use Shaper Tools products in your shop. Usually with woodworking, we branch out a little bit into some small metalworking, into vinyl cutting, that kind of stuff here and there, but mostly with a woodworking focus. Um, and since this is a live show, you've got a really cool opportunity to ask us questions. So we've got Ted our friend in the chat. Ted's going to be answering as many questions as he can over text, and any questions that Ted can't answer or wants to send to us for a demo, he's going to send those to us at the end of the show. So make sure you type out your questions so that we can get them, so that we can do a little demo for you uh, for any questions that you have. Yep. And plus we do fun giveaways, so make sure to be active in that chat when the poll question pops up. Yeah, so the poll, the poll question. question is going to be a pop-up in your screen, and that's going to show up about halfway through the show. We'll announce it. We're going to do two demos first, and then we'll do the poll question. So stay tuned. Uh, the poll question later, so that you can think ahead about what that is, is just how do you want to use Trace and Studio together? I think the specific wording was, what do you want to be able to do with Trace in Studio? Which is kind of a product-oriented question. Um, it's like maybe what features do you want to see? Yeah. Um, it could also be what do you want to make, but I think we're looking for ways that you're interested in working with the two tools together. And you might learn a lot about that during this show also. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, that's Sessions in a nutshell. Uh, before we get into Trace Plus Studio, we do want to do one quick demo of just what is Trace in what a nutshell. Thing? If you've been watching these shows and you still haven't quite wrapped your head around it, we've got this demo that we love to do. So let's get yeah. started. My signature is all over the world now. Uh, I'm going to do... But honestly, it's one of the most common things that people want to do when it comes to hand-drawn thing. It's just get their signature into a digitized format so they can engrave it, yeah. mark that final, you know, put a stamp of pride on the bottom of a piece they just finished. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do a signature. Yeah, let's switch to that overhead cam. There we go. Yeah, nice and loopy. There you go. That's cool. a JS. Uh, and we've got more tips on how to do signatures, we'll say, air quotes, the best way with Trace. But, you know, we're not going to talk about that today. Make sure that you go back and watch some of those other Trace shows where we go into that in more detail. Today, we're just showing you guys how this thing works. All right, we got the Trace frame. We lay the Trace frame over our drawing or sketch. And now we've got the Trace app. So when Jake brings that camera over to look at the trace frame, and now this doesn't have to be square to the frame in any particular way. Let's switch to the phone. Mm, redo. <laughs> yeah, let's switch to the phone view here. There we go. Um, yeah, when you, when you scroll over there and it doesn't have to be at any particular angle, trace automatically flattens this image for you and automatically converts it to a vector file. That is beautiful. And what do we use these vector files for? We use them for cutting with digital fabrication tools or working with digital design software. Um, Shaper Studio, for instance, is a piece of digital design software. Shaper Origin is a digital fabrication tool. Um, and without even involving Studio in this in any way, we can go ahead and sync this either directly to Origin, so we can show that process off here really quick. Sync to My Files is how you do this. And you can't quite see Jake tapping on the screen, but he tapped Sync to My Files. And that saves this file to your Shaper Hub account, which is a repository for all of your files that also synchronizes directly to uh, your Shaper Origin. I want to do a quick demo, too, while we have the phone screen up. Uh, 
something that makes trace unique is you can see what we're looking at is two lines. That's the width, that's the thickness of our pen line. But if we're just looking for that center line, simple tap of a button and that gives us a single line. So that's what you're mm -hmm. looking for if you want to engrave something. Yeah, so why don't you send me that center line, Jake? Because I've got a couple of checks I need to sign. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Let's do boom. I'm going to save as SVG. Uh-huh. So instead of hitting save to my files, what was the button that you hit there again? You're going to hit save, save SVG. SVG. Okay. And you can see this pops up this share uh, dialog that gives you all different ways to share this stuff. Um, yeah, you could, uh, why don't you email it to us at uh, sessions at shapertools.com. That's coming from Mahona. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, while, while I do that, sessions at shapertools. What else can people do at sessions at shapertools.com? they can send us shop tours. Um, so we're not playing a shop tour this week because we're still actually coming down from the high of our Masterclass Live event, right? And so we've got a, um, a cool slideshow that we've got put together today that's going to show you that Masterclass Live event, and that's going to be at the mid-show break also. Do I have that waiting for me in my inbox now? You do, indeed. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, so that's Trace in a nutshell. Uh, you've got Outline and Centerline. If you go back to see the previous shows that we've done on Trace, we'll dive more in those shows into how to maybe adjust these drawings in Trace itself. But today we've got a few demos that use Trace plus Studio together. And if you watched our last show, you might remember that we did a inlay using Trace plus Origin. It was a spooky season, so it was this little maple ghost <laughs> in a walnut blank. Um, and... What we did in that show was we showed you how to do this just with Origin, a uh, couple of tricks for doing that kind of complicated pocket while avoiding cutting out the ghost's eyes on accident. And today what we're going to show you is um, how to do that same inlay, but with Studio and Shapeshifter. Um, and if those words, I mean, there's a lot of new stuff for people that are kind of new to our system. If those words aren't ringing a bell for you, Studio and Shapeshifter, before we dive too deep into this demo, I want to show you on my laptop what is Shaper Studio, what is Shapeshifter, what is all that stuff. So let's hop over here. The first thing that you're going to see, um, when you sign up for a Studio account, I just signed up for a new Studio account today is this Welcome to Studio screen. And you can see right here, this is our tagline, the simplified design tool for craftspeople. Um, you've got two options. We have a free trial of full featured studio, or you could opt to use Studio Lite temporarily, which is a partially featured version. Um, I'm gonna opt for Studio Lite for now. And in the meantime, it's going to show me a tour of full studio, which I think is just a nice way to get everybody's bearings. So let's do this quick tour. And this is new, by the way, so props to the studio design team for putting this tour together. The first thing you're going to see is this create bar over here. So you've got all kinds of options. You've got find art, you've got make shape, you've got add text, and you have import over here. Next screen, find art. Uh, where you can find uh, SVG files pre-made just by hitting a search term and hitting go. Uh, import and trace. This is where you bring in uh, imports from your My Files or also uh, switch out to trace to take a trace capture to bring into Studio. And we'll go through all of this again later in the show. Um, Shapeshifter is over here. Now, if you have a couple of shapes that you've already placed on your design canvas, you're going to hit Shapeshifter. And what that does is it allows you to select any of these overlapping segments and turn them into new shapes, which is really cool. Uh, and then, of course, up here, you've got design, plan, review, and a bunch of different preferences. Plan mode allows you to program cuts for origin with cut type and depth. And then re review mode lets you preview what that file is going to be like when you, when you actually cut it, which is a nice gut check. You know, uh, it lets you kind of see what you should expect. And if you don't see what you do expect, then you get to go back to plan mode and revise your plan so that when you get to origin, when you get to cut, you really have a good plan for what you're doing. Then, last but not least, you've got a main menu up here um, where you've got links to your files and 
the help menu down here at the bottom right. This is uh, pretty new, I think, actually, this help menu. So if you're new to Studio and you've got questions about features after taking the tour, um, you can hit this help menu button. And you could either start the tour again, which is really helpful. I went through that at kind of a blistering pace. So you are going to want to go ahead and watch this tour again at home. You also can watch tutorial videos, and you can get answers in the Help Center. We've got suggested articles, and you also can search. Um, now, this is Studio Light that we're looking at right now. We've got Find Art, Make Shape, Add Text. You'll notice that the Import button is missing. You can get trace files into Studio uh, using the Trace app. That's one kind of shortcut. But uh, to make this as easy as possible and to use Shapeshifter, I'm actually going to upgrade to that free trial. Uh, it's a 14-day free trial. You do that just by hitting this Unlock Studio button. And the cool thing about this is that it's no credit card required whatsoever. So 14 days, just try all the stuff. Uh, see if you like it. And if you do like it, then subscribe. But if you don't like it, uh, no loss. And we're not going to charge you for anything because we don't even have your information. So we're just going to hit that Unlock Studio button right there. Start a free trial. Starting our studio trial. And that's all there is to it. Now you can see we've got that import button. 14-day trial starts now. Uh, it's that easy. OK. Now now we're ready, because we're going to do that shape shifter. I had to get that activated. So we've got this ghost drawing over here. Let's get that scanned. Let's import it into Studio. Um, and then we can do some shape shifting. Okay. And we could probably even do this all on the phone. That's what do you think? Because I could, I could send it to you. But I think we should just totally use it on the phone. I think we'll do this one on the phone, and then we yeah. can show some later demos on the laptop. That's the beauty of Studio. You can do it on an iPad, phone, or laptop. OK. Got my ghost drawing. Bring that up. Beep. I'm going to refresh. Always allow access to the camera. There we go. All right, so nice. we're going to hop over to that center line. What did you do there again, Jake, one more time? You converted from outline to center line. Yep, that just and gives me a nice, clean, single line mm -hmm. versus a double line. And that single line, like we said in the last show, that single line is what you want for inlays, so you don't have confusion between the two fits. We're going to hit that blue check mark, and we are going to edit in Shaper Studio. OK, nice. Um, Unseen, Jake just handed the phone to me, so I'm going to narrate the rest of this. We're going to <laughs> we're going to open a new studio design here. So let's go back to the phone screen. We're going to click the bottom of the screen here where it says New Studio Design. OK, we got that. And here, Shaper Studio is opening right up. Um, now we can place these objects all together or exploded. Um, that basically just changes the way that they drag around when you um, when you click and move them. I'm going to place them all together because I don't want these to move relative to each other. Place that object. That's great. I can zoom out and see the ghost. And now I'm going to show you guys, before we go into Shapeshifter, what the issue is with this, potentially. If we go into plan mode, I'm going to turn this outside profile and deselect those. I'm going to turn this into a pocket, because we want to pocket out the negative for this inlay. So I turn that into a pocket. And now let's see what happens when I go to review mode. When I go to review mode, it's totally obliterated the eyes of this ghost. That's not OK. That's not what we want. So what we're going to use is Shapeshifter. And Shapeshifter is going to allow us to combine all of these three into one shape um, so that we can have that pocket with uh, without accidentally cutting through the eyes. OK? So we've got this shape selected. Now this icon here at the bottom left of the screen, the triangle and the circle, is Shapeshifter. So when I select Shapeshifter, it allows me to select a set of shapes. I can select the ghost. I can select a ghost with eyeball. I've got big thumbs. So I'm actually going to click and drag. Uh, or select all. And then you can also deselect different parts. Um, 
I'm going to clear that selection and then just select the ghost here. And now you can see I've got this one shape. I am not going to keep the original shapes. And so it's going to convert this three shaped design into just one shape. And this might be a lot to a uh, big hurdle to make mentally, but you'll see the impact of this in a second. So I'm going to make that shape. Now you can see with this blue, um, this light blue background, it's kind of lighter and the eyes are that white color of the background. That's because now the eyes have been excluded. If I go over here and make this cut a pocket, you can see that now I've got the pocket minus the eyes. And if I go into review mode, this is exactly what I'm looking for for that inlay negative. This is the ghost with the eyes not pocketed out. OK, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to rename this as ghost inlay negative. OK, done. Uh, now, here's a really cool thing that you can do in Studio. Jake could switch this cut file uh, on his own in Origin if he wanted. But what I'm going to do for him to make that a little easier is I'm going to duplicate this design. Uh, it looks like it opened a tab. Oh, I don't know how to do tabs on iPhones, Jake. How do you do tabs? Hey, there we go. OK, so we have to let it open a new tab. We're all learning as we go together. My files, enhance pop-ups. OK. Click here. Open. OK, I think we did it. So now I'm going to go over back to, yeah, negative copy. Perfect. Um, now we're going to go back to design mode. OK, that's our same ghost. We're going to go back to plan mode. We're going to make this an outside cut. Now you can see for doing this inlay, this is going to cut the positive of the inlay if we go to review mode. This section in the middle here is what we want to take away and put in the negative. So I'm going to rename this ghost inlay, eh, ghost inlay positive. And if that was a little quick, um, we put all these videos up on YouTube. And I really encourage everybody uh, to watch them again. You know, watch them again on YouTube. Try to follow along with the steps um, and do this project at home. Cool. So, Jake, you think you're ready to cut this stuff? I am ready. Now, do we see those files on Origin? Uh, I bet you we do. Design, import. Look at those. Nice. I think I saved an extra one. All right, so we want that positive inlay. And I'm going to rotate him. I'm going to rotate him. There we go. I like that little ridge of uh, that little cathedral of grain. Mm -hmm. Very sheet like. Very sheet like, but I don't want to get too close to my edge. Eh, okay. That looks cool right there. Yeah. Okay. Got an eighth inch bit in there, which is being shown. And we can get in all our nooks and crannies. Okay. Nice. You're going to zip this out just in one pass? Uh, two passes, rough and finish. Okay. One depth. Cool. All right. I'm going to step aside here so that we don't get blown out by the router sound. And Jake is ready to cut. So, yeah, the, the way that we showed you to do that last time uh, with Origin plus Trace alone was basically just to be very careful around the eyeballs of this ghost. Um, but the cool thing about Origin, especially in pocketing mode, is that it will uh, actively prevent you from cutting things that you don't want to cut if you put them in your design. So when we do things like shape-shifting to include the eyes of the ghost in this pocket, uh, it really makes this project that much more foolproof and that much more fun to cut because you don't have to worry about making those mistakes. You just kind of follow along the dotted line and the router does so much of the work for you. Uh, you do have to draw a tasteful ghost, like Jake has done. Um, but that's why some of us go to art school. Jake's just following around the outer path of this ghost here. Uh, and like he said, he's doing a roughing pass and a finishing pass. Especially for inlays, we like to do a roughing pass and a finishing pass. Uh, and that's because the roughing pass will allow us to remove most of that material. 
then the finishing pass, which only takes off a small amount of material, allows you to have much more control over the router to get a much finer end result. Um, it is a tool that you have to work with. It's kind of a human and robot collaborative kind of process. Uh, and so the smoother you can operate the tool, the better your cut quality is going to be. So we always recommend for things where you need the highest possible cut quality, do a roughing pass and a finishing pass. Looks like we might need one more pass to go all the way through on the depth there. That's on me. I planed this down a little bit thick. I was aiming for a quarter, but uh, I just eyeballed it on the planer. So I think we're at 5 sixteenths, actually. Jake's doing just a little check there to make sure that the depth is going all the way through. Looks like you can see the MDF on the shelf below, and that's how you know you're going all the way through. So you're making a good, clean cut. Sometimes I like to just let everybody sit and watch this because following the line can be pretty meditative um, to watch and to do, you know, when you're at home. Just follow the dotted line. Just keep on moving. There we go. Got a pry bar over there. All right. Nice, that looks pretty good. I will take that. So we've got the positive. We're going to show you uh, cutting that negative, and then we'll do the fit. And the beauty of Trace having that center line option or being able to choose any side of your outline um, and deleting the extra line. But as long as you end up with one line in the end, whether it's the center line or one of the two outline lines, um, that really gets you that perfect inlay fit, positive and negative. Because with Origin, you're cutting to the same line just from opposite directions. Yeah. For the positive, you're coming from the outside of the line. For the negative, you're going up to the inside of the line. All right, want to do that block of maple? Yeah, let's do this block of maple. Now the nice thing about working with Origin this way, um, we haven't been like scanning or gridding. If you're interested in learning more about scanning and gridding, definitely check out some of our shows about that. Um, but the cool thing that I love to do when I get the opportunity to is just working based off of the image capture. It's a very visual tool, and especially with graphic type of work like this, like inlays, it lets you really work visually and work with the grain of the wood to place things tastefully. It lets you make some nice choices on your own that you wouldn't otherwise be able to with like layout tools like ruler and pencil and things like that. Totally. For aesthetics and for strength, especially in inlays, you know, you have long spindly bits that mm -hmm. could be really fragile if they get into the cross grain territory. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to be able to see what you're going to land on. And, uh, you know, let's just go ahead and do an add to scan. Add to scan is updating the image that Jake already had and overlaying the new images of the workpiece that it's taking. Uh, this is also how you might add tape, for example. And get rid, of, get rid of that ghost. Okay. Now we want the pocket ghost. Both of those two are the same. Okay. Go for the original. Bam. Rotate 90. Yeah, just eyeball it. Let's do them right there. Cool. Now let's make sure that we show this pocket on screen. Yeah, so this is all a pocket built in. Excluded are those eyes. And that is going to keep us from uh, messing about and accidentally cutting one of them off. 
And that's all due to Shapeshifter. So that's what Shapeshifter does is it allows you to select those shapes and take them and combine them into one shape. The cool thing about a, we call them a compound shape. Uh, the cool thing about a compound shape like this is that you can also use just one outside cut to cut all of the features in the ghost. So one outside cut does the outside of the profile and it also does the inside of the eyes, which is the outside of the shape. It's kind of freaky to think about, but it's one cut type for the whole thing. Um, whereas now with this pocket, we're gonna do a pocket and then we're going to do an inside cut on the whole thing. Um, and because those eyes are part of the same shape, the inside cut is gonna take care of those eyes also. Cool. All right, so point three was just a tad deep, so we're gonna do point two, eight. Nice. Okay, so we got a lot of pocketing to do on this one. Yep. And then you're gonna have to come back and clean some stuff up probably and get around those eyes. Yeah, I put an eight millimeter bit in there just to speed it up a little bit. Okay, cool. Let's get going. Is anybody doing Thanksgiving crafts? We've kind of moved beyond Halloween crafts. We wanted to show off this ghost just to keep continuity with the last show for anybody who watched that one and wanted to say, hey, how do they do that demo with Studio? Um, but is anybody doing Thanksgiving crafts? We'd love to see them. Post them up on Shaper Hub. Make sure you share that stuff on Instagram or just tell us about it in the chat here. And make sure to keep asking questions. Uh, we've got some good questions already. But keep asking away. Ted will answer as many as possible. And uh, any questions that should have a demo, uh, Ted will send to us at the end of the show. You know, if you've used Studio with Trace together, we would just love to hear your experience. Definitely always interested in that stuff. Um, have you used Shapeshifter in this way? I really like using Shapeshifter this way for tenons. We've done a couple other shows on tenons using Shapeshifter. If you want more background on that or another application for this process, definitely check those out as well. Now, the cool thing about pocketing mode is that it clears out that whole cross-hatched area. And when you're inside that cross-hatched area, um, Origin locks the spindle to the center of its corrective range. Then when you reach the boundary of that pocket, that's when that corrective range kicks in and prevents you from overcutting. So that's the feature that prevents you from overcutting into these eyeballs here. You'll notice also, uh, this is something that we got a lot of practice with at Masterclass Live last week. And you'll notice that Jake is trying not to climb cut too much in this pocket. Um, we don't do big pockets like this very often, so we don't get to talk about it very much, but that router bit, if you're looking at it from the top down, it's spinning clockwise. Um, one thing that'll help your cut quality and help prevent the router from running away from you is always make sure your conventional cutting, which is working against the direction of that router bit. Always a tight fit with that camera on the spindle, huh? <laughs> Every time. All right, swap back to my eighth inch. Bam. Nice. Bam. How's that pocket look? You think you need to do another pocket, or are you going to go straight to the inside cut? I got a pocket out the head and around the eyes with the eight, eighth inch. Okay. Cool. And then an inside, and we're done. Cool. So we've got a couple more pocketing cuts to do, and then you also may have noticed that Jake's going straight to this inside cut after pocketing. Um, whereas with the outside cut, we do a roughing and a finishing pass. With the pocketing, it actually leaves a little bit of a buffer intentionally, and that is the difference between your roughing and finishing pass right there. So you don't always have to go back and do another roughing pass after you do a pocketing pass. The pocketing pass has that roughing buffer built in. So I suspect Jake will be able to go right in 
and go straight to that finishing pass with this eighth inch router bit after doing that pocket, which is pretty cool. That said, I can't see what he did on the screen there, so I'm not sure if that was correct or not. Ah, uh, Jake says fourth out offset. Ah, uh, that's important. Okay, fourth out offset. Um, that fourth out offset is how we tune the fit of the positive to the negative part of the inlay. And we know from experience that doing these on the live shows, four thousandths negative offset is what you want to get a nice, good, clean fit that goes in the first time, typically. You know, because when you make things that are exactly line on line, they don't always like to go together so smoothly. So that 4 thousandths offset, negative 4 thousandths offset, is about the thickness of a piece of paper, gap between the two pieces, and that is A-OK -okay with us. Um, that'll be taken up by, you know, wood shrinkage or glue filling the gap or, you know, a little bit of sawdust here and there. It doesn't take much to fill that 4 thousandths gap. And you'll see the fit of this when we put it together. You looking for a sanding stick, Jake? That was the uh, universal signal for sanding stick. All right. Got to knock off some of the fuzz. Yeah, look out, it's the fuzz. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, you got to have fun, man. I love this. I wasn't too precious with this pocket either because it's getting buried by an inlay. Uh, but a good way to get nice, consistent pocket bottoms is making sure that you are putting even pressure downwards on the tool. Not a ton of weight, but just even weight throughout the entire pocket area. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, that looks pretty good. This is actually a pretty deep inlay, and I'm impressed looking at it now that those eyes stayed attached because they're going cross grain. I didn't even think about it, I just went for it. Just, yeah, <laughs> you only live once, folks. All right, vacuum. Nice. Let's see how it fits. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Cool. There we go. Looks good. Beautiful. This is turning in a long show, so I want to keep us moving here. I, yeah. <laughs> We're already a half hour in. Uh, but that was fun. That was using Shapeshifter to do an inlay. Um, and like I said, that's applicable for mortise and tenons, all kinds of other applications. Check out some of the other studio shows that we've done where we talk about Shapeshifter in more detail. Okay. So I think that it's time to pull up the poll question. And again, that poll question is, what do you want to be able to do in studio with Trace. Um, answer this poll question. That's how you enter to win our giveaway at the end of the show. Today, I think we're giving away some swag packs because we hadn't thought about it really before. So I think that that's a good one to do, just a good default. Um, and a swag pack is a shop banner, a hat, and a couple of stickers. A couple of cool like, bumper stickers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you answer that poll question while it's up. Ned, how long do we have on that poll question? Another three and a half minutes. Holy smokes. Okay, so while that's going, let's talk about Masterclass Live. Oh, my gosh. Um, so cool. We're still kind of coming down <laughs> from this thing because it was so much fun. Um, Masterclass Live, we got together with 60 folks, and we've told you about this on sessions before, but we got together with 60 folks here at Shaper HQ. Um, we had three classes from three incredible instructors, uh, Daryl Peart, Matt Kenny and Phil Morley. Uh, we did an Origin Fundamentals session on Friday night. Um, we had incredible food. We had like dim sum on Friday. We had burritos Saturday night. We had bagels for breakfast. <laughs> it's like good stuff. Um, 
we met a lot of you folks, which was really awesome. Yeah. Um, got to put some faces to names and just had an overall, like, really good time, you know? Yeah. Um, so we've got a slideshow coming up that we're going to play, I think, closer to when this poll question starts to wind down. Um, but we also wanted to just ask, you know, like, put this in the chat, maybe, if you will, when you're done with the poll question, like, what would you like to see in our next Masterclass Live? What we took away from this is we're definitely going to do more. Yes. Right. So um, this is your opportunity to tell us what you would like from the next Masterclass Live. Where do you want it to be? I thought that this Masterclass Live was pretty cool because it had, like, a good balance of, like, a lot of origin work in Daryl's class, for example, a kind of hybrid model in Phil's class, and a purely hands-off the tool um, segment for Matt Kenny's class on drawing, which was just all about sketching. It was so much fun. Yeah, and the point was bringing new skills and dusting off old skills that uh, we needed refreshers on. Mm Mm-hmm. Things like basics of origin and making a grid, making centerline grids, cutting metals, mm-hmm. whatever it is. That was uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us what you would want to see. Tell us if there are any instructors that you would want to learn from because we're trying to source a bunch of instructors for this thing. Um, and tell us where you would want it to be. Just tell us that in the chat after you answer this poll question. Okay. I think the poll's got to be wrapping up or like close to it. So let's play the slide deck um, from Masterclass Live. Jake and I can kind of narrate as it goes. So leave our leave our sound on here, Ned. But let's let's pull that up and show that off. Shaper Tools Masterclass Live. Um, we got a couple photos just to kick it off from the opening night, and you can see everybody in that HQ space. It was just incredible to have the space full of energy. Um, we had three amazing instructors, like I mentioned. We had Daryl Peart, we had uh, Matt Kenny, and we had Phil Morley. What did Daryl teach, Jake? Daryl did a lot with that one. Daryl did a finger pull. Yeah, it was a green and green style finger pull, and he taught all sixty people how to make their own green and green style finger pull with using Origin and Workstation, and then with a lot of Daryl's um, kind of old school hand shaping techniques. Yeah, he has a very unique. <laughs> an inspiring way of hand shaping and just makes you feel f- free like it really making that surface look eroded which is the whole ethos of uh green and green style furniture yeah 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 um we had phil morley who did a class on tambour doors together with sean i think phil did like the tambour part sean did a lot of the origin info in that one um and, you know, if you were at Masterclass Live and you have comments from the event, definitely pipe up in the chat here. Uh, love to get your take. But I saw people having a ton of fun and learning a lot, especially in that Tambor class, both how to design digital files for Tambor and also how to make the Tambor panels themselves, whether it was a couple of different methods or some of Phil's proprietary tricks. Uh, I know he has a couple of fixtures that he shared with people. That was all really cool, especially that veneer process that he shared. Yeah, uh, these are all people making Daryl's green and green pole. The shaping I thought was so much fun to see him shape this stuff. What I really loved about this too, we ha- we were teaming people up, and they were learning as much from each other as they were from each of us. So mm-hmm. if if one person had a little bit better handle on origin, they would go first, and the other person got to watch them go through the process. And I mean, learning from your peers is is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And then. You know, last but not least, we had Matt Kenny teaching drawing for woodworking. And I know for me, drawing isn't a thing that I think about very much. So it was cool to hear about Matt's approach to drawing. Um, and not only just hear about it, but kind of get forced to practice, mm-hmm. right? Because he had everybody sit down and iterate on drawings using some of his tips and techniques. Um, and we saw some of the drawings. I mean, there's one that people came away with at the end of this. And they're just incredible designs that I think anybody would be proud to make. Yeah. And, of course, we wrapped up Saturday with a nice uh, taco truck out front. And mm, the fire pits going, a couple of beers. Just sharing stories, too. I'm like... You know, what is your next project? What is what is something that really got you hung up? Yeah. And that was awesome. So uh, if you're interested in participating in next year's Masterclass Live series, I'm going to say series because I think there's going to be more than one. Yeah. Go to that website, shapertools.com slash masterclass dash 
live, masterclass dash live. And Ted's going to drop a link to that in the chat. There's going to be a button there where you can register your email address and we'll keep you up to date on all this stuff. Of course, we announce it here, but you want to hear it from the email first because this one sold out pretty quick. It did. So stay tuned. Okay. Um, great. No product announcements today. I mean, that was the big one. No. But okay. Nice walkthrough on uh, studios. Pretty big. Yeah, walkthrough on studios. Cool. Let's roll into our next demo. Holy smokes, it's 4.45 already. <laughs> All right, let's roll into our next demo. This next one's going to be quick. This next one's going to be fun and quick. This one's on the laptop. We're going to use that JS. Uh, we're going to scan it again. We're going to save it to my files. And we're going to import that into Studio so that we can make a little maker's mark for yeah. Jake. What do you guys think about that? Okay. can't remember where I put it. It's right under there. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's scan this up. All right. Oh, I got the phone over here, and I'm sorry, Ned, but I turned it off. I'm going to have to get the screen capture going again. Okay, I do this every time. All right, should be coming through in three, two, one. Uh, all right, broadcasting. Let me know when you're ready. Sweet. All right, here we go. Shape or trace. Oh, restart. There we go. If you ever run into any problems, just restart. It's like turn it off and on again. All right, ready to capture. We're going to capture that. And uh, let's see, I do want to do a little update to this because we've got some lines that aren't quite as closed as they should be. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust this scan. Oh, yeah, that means that I need to make it darker when you have those open lines like that. I'm going to slide to the right to make that darker. We're getting there. It's so hard with the lighting in the studio. We've got bright lights and a lot of glare here. But that looks pretty good. And I'm going to save this just as it is. And now, before we showed you save SVG, save to shaper my files. Those are ways that you can use files from Trace without needing to go into studio. Um, I'm going to save this to shaper my files. And I'm going to go back into studio on the laptop and import this file so that I can work with it that way. Okay, saved to my files. We're going to call that done. Now, let's go over to the laptop. Here I am in studio. I'm going to rename this design. I'm going to call this Maker's Mark. Perfect. And the first thing I'm going to do is import that file. I'm going to get it from my files. And it's right here at the top because it's the last thing I did. js.svg. Cool. I'm going to import that. Now, what did you say you wanted for this, Jake? Like a little brass plaque to put on your furniture? Yeah, but not something just like cut off the end of a piece of stock. Something yeah. unique in, in shape. Okay. So we do want to make this a little smaller. This does preserve your scale, and you made that signature quite big. Um, I'm going to place this object, but you can see it's 2.7 by 3.1. I am going to scale that down first. Let's make this like one inch tall. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we got that. Um, now, what do you say we add a shape to this? I think like a diamond would be pretty tasteful with yeah, this. Yeah, like an elongated diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, the way that I like to make diamonds is by combining two triangles. And this is another shapeshifter thing. Mm. So I'm going to make a, a triangle with the polygon tool. And let's make this... Uh, it's got to be a little wider than one inch. Let's make it 1.5 inches wide and unlink these so that I can make it a little taller, even 1.5 inches tall. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use this anchor. I'm also going to turn on my grid. Okay, so that everything snaps. And I'm going to snap this guy to the grid right there. I'm also going to snap my JS. I actually don't want to snap that. I want it to be a little bit a little bit off, just tastefully there. And I'm going to duplicate this triangle because I want it to be the same size. Um, you could flip or rotate 180 degrees. Bring that back in right there. We got that all snapped together. The JS looks pretty tasteful in there. What like do you it. think? Yeah. We can put some screw holes in here. Uh, let's say you want to use, what do you say, quarter inch screw holes? Sure. 
It's a eight, little big. Maybe eighth inch. <laughs> okay, eighth inch. Yeah, nice. There we go. Whoa, not that one. Whoa, not that one. <laughs> yeah, selection. I gotta, I gotta click first. I know I wasn't clicking. That's okay. It's really easy to put this stuff back. I'm gonna put that right, right there. I um, want two of these, so I'm gonna duplicate that. And let's put this here. I can also turn on my grid in different increments. So let's see what happens if I do this in eighth inch increments. Make sure to turn show grid on too. Oh yeah, thanks. Okay, that's what I was doing. Show grid. Aha, there it is. Okay, let's drag that. And let's position that at 1.125. X equals zero. Okay, and for this one, X equals zero, Y equals negative 1.125. Okay, cool. We got some little screw holes there. Um, and then, let's do some text. Last but not least, I want to add a little bit of text to this. What do you say? Established 2023? 20, sure. Brand new company. Established. EST or established? EST. EST. EST 2023. Since we have like the kind of cursive JS, let's do a nice clean mm -hmm. sans serif or something with this. Mm -hmm. That one's pretty cool. What do you think? I like it. A little bit big, but we can A, size this. Come here. There we go. Size that nicely. We can rotate that so that it lines up, and we can drag that right down. I think this is kind of a cool spot right here. Let me get that rotate. Yeah, that's it. And if you want to fine tune that, what I love to do is just bump around with the arrow keys. I'm just hitting the arrow keys to move this thing around. Um, okay, and you know we've done shape shifter a couple of times. I'm going to just shape shift these four shapes only. I only selected those four geometric shapes, the triangles and the circles. I'm going to hit shape shifter on that, and I'm going to I'm going to combine these two, make shape. So now I've got signature, established 2023, and this combined shape which has the screw holes already cut into it. Perfect. So that's a quick little demo of how you could use Trace with Studio combined together to add geometric elements and text to a design that you have. Uh, the last demo that we have for you is how to use Trace and Studio together to arrange different files together. And we've been teasing this application for a while. We did it in a short form on the last show. We're going to make a little toolbox. I know everybody loves these sustainer toolboxes. I love my little sustainer toolbox. We've got three small hand planes over here that we are going to trace or that we have traced. We've traced two of them. We're going to trace the third one live and we're going to lay them out in this in this sustainer using Studio. All right. All right. We can put this aside. We can put these aside. We're going to scan. These are our plane drawings that we already made. I'm going to put the ghost aside. And we do have one more sketch to make. And that's going to be this guy. So I'm just going to trace this briefly. Can I borrow your pencil, Jake? Thank you. Now, for this stuff, you know, this isn't an inlay. You don't have to be so, so precise. I'm actually going to do this just a little bit oversized to get the uh, the smoothest line possible. And the nice thing about this long pencil is that you can use it really nice and vertically to capture all of these, all of these cool features that are going on in this plane here. And we got this from Hultafors, right, Jake? Yes. But there are a couple of different brands. What's the other one that you like? Pika Dry. Pika Dry. 
somebody on Shaper Hub, and we should really make this because I think it would be so handy for this. Made like a, made some kind of a, like a drawing jig, you know what I mean? Did you see that project that I'm talking about? It was like a drawing jig that holds the pencil and it has an edge that vertically references the thing that you're trying to trace. Ah, uh, that's cool. You see what I'm saying? We should make one of those for a show. Maybe the next project show that we do. Specifically for trace? Is well, I mean, mean, it's it's for tracing objects, and it works really well with Shaper Trace. But I don't think it was, like, originally intended for Shaper Trace. Like, it existed before Shaper Trace existed. All right. Almost done with this one. I am using the quarter inch by inch and a half long O flute bit. So it's that really long O flute. And that is our go-to for foam cutting. So you, it gets all the way down. Uh, it's the longest bit we sell, but it's also that O flute. So it really mm -hmm. gets really, it up and out of there. Really gets that foam. Okay. So um, the one thing that I like about pencil is that it lets you clean up the lines as you go. It lets you darken the lines. And then our tip for tracing complex objects like this that I'll show you as soon as we get this trace capture is to take the inside of the two lines because that's going to be the cleanest option that you have. So we just trace this. I mean, let's see how it turns out. Let's move this to the overhead cam. Yeah, there we go. Can you guys see that? Okay. You want to put it on the workstation. Let's put it uh, right there. It's all right. Okay. So I've got the phone up here. I'm going to bring that in. Ready to capture. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's just not quite dark enough yet. So we've done this adjustment before. Again, this is that studio lighting thing. We're gonna adjust scan and we're gonna make this darker so that that whole line is black. Keep it going. I'm just gonna go all the way. Let's see what that does. Oh, we got some fuzzies in there now. Let's do that. Yeah. That's really good. Okay, and now see how the inner line is cleaner than the outer line because the outer line's got this gunk up at the top right corner. We're going to go into object selection and we're just going to remove everything and select the inner profile. And we'll call that done. Okay, so I'm going to save this to my files also. I'm going to call this plane one. Okay, I'm going to get ready to take another capture. Jake's setting this up behind the scenes here. I think that's good enough. We'll get plane two. Again, got to adjust this. Nice, that looks good. Again, I'm going to remove everything and select just the inner path. Save as plane two. Okay, and last but not least, you guys are going to laugh at this one because it's just <laughs> a rectangle. But sometimes, you know, you don't want to have to measure things. You just want to just draw them out and capture them. And that's the cool thing about Trace is that it takes all of your captures and preserves the scale. This one's a pretty light drawing, but it does still capture it. You just have to crank that contrast. Perfect. And because this one's so clean, I'm just going to take the center line on this one. And no, I'll take that line. Again, we're removing both and selecting the inner. Done. And I'm going to save that as plane three. Nice. Done. Okay, now for the part I could have prepared better for, we're going to go to Shaper Hub and see if we can find see if we can find a mini sustainer profile. So here we are in the laptop. Um, Shaper Hub is where you find files that other people have made, cool projects to make with Origin. We're going to look for a sustainer profile here. 
We've got sustainer, sustainer, sustainer. These are all the big ones. Sustainer mini T-lock inlay. So sustainer mini is what we're working for. This one's got a couple of complicated cutouts in it, but I might look at that. Um, and what we're about to do with this is we're going to import this again into our studio design and use this as a just kind of a template to place our planes. This one looks really good. This is a nice basic file, mini sustainer insert. This is gonna be the right size, um, and this will help us lay out these little hand planes. And what I'm gonna do so that I can synchronize this and import it into Studio is I'm gonna to sync to my files. So you hit sync to your files there, successfully added to my files, that's awesome. Now I can go over to Studio, start a new design, and make this hand plane layout. And we'll call this plane kit. Nice. And like we did with the JS, all of these things are going to be imported. And what we're showing you here is that you can import not only from Trace, but you can also import from Shaper Hub. You can combine these things, you can remix them, you can make new Shaper Hub projects. So let's import this mini sustainer template. Let's go over to the laptop. Import from my files. You could do from your you know, hard drive if you want, if you've got anything on there, but you could do from my files. I'm gonna go into this mini sustainer insert. Every project that you sync is gonna have a folder. So I'm gonna go into that folder. I want mini sys insert .svg. I import that. What do you say, Jake? 10 by six and a half, does that sound about right? Yes. That looks pretty good. So let's place that. Cool, that looks really good. Now let's add some more. My files, I'm gonna back out of that. I've got plane one, plane two, and plane three. So let's start with plane one. Uh, this one we said we were gonna do horizontally, right, I think. So we're gonna rotate this 90, not 900, 90 degrees. Let's try that one right there. Okay, we might have to arrange these. That's the whole point of this. We're gonna have to do a little bit of arranging. Uh, plane two, place, let's give this, I don't know, what do you say, negative five degrees, straighten that out, that's pretty good, let's do just a little bit less, yeah, that looks nice, we can take that, we can put that over here, okay, and then we're going to import, last but not least, plane three, now this one's the one that's going to make it feel a little bit tight, and we'll rotate this, I think, 89 degrees. No, 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 91 degrees, because it's going uh, clockwise. I think that's, yeah, that's mm. pretty square right there. Yeah, cool. That looks pretty good. OK, that's pretty good. Uh, I think what I want to do, because this is narrower on this end than this end, narrower on the top than the bottom, I want to flip that around. So we'll make that 184 instead of 104. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now there's one last step that I want to do here. And um, this is another shapeshifter thing. So it's something that uh, we've shown in a different way in the last show. We actually drew this feature in. But today, I'm going to show you how to do it with shapeshifter. And that is how to make little finger pulls for this stuff. So I'm going to make a shape. Um, for this one, I think these two files can actually share a finger pull. So I'm going to put that right there in between the two. Um, and then for this little guy, I think I'm going to put it in that kind of upper left corner and we'll make that one circular. So we'll do a circular pull. Oops. Control Z. If you ever do something that you want to undo, I'm going to take that circular pull and just put that right there. Now here's the magic. I'm going to take both of these shift select. To, to get both of those. I'm going to shape shift. I'm going to select all and I'm going to make shape which combines those two together. And then for these three, I'm going to shift click on all three of those shapes. Shape shifter, select all, make shape. Now I've got one nice big pocket for those. Beautiful. Cool. Would you do me a favor? What's the favor? Assign some depth. Yeah, we can do that in plan mode. 
And I think for the sake of time, let's just cut out this um, this really interesting one yeah. here. Uh, all right. And you're going to have to tell me how deep to go on that. So I'm going to change that to a pocket cut. And I'm going to change that to, yeah, how deep do you want it? Let's just go all the way through, 1.5. 1.5? Or uh, How about we do one 1. and a quarter? Yeah, so it's not uh, so it's not banging into the bottom of the box. One point two five. Okay, great. And let's do that on on these also, just so that we can preview it in review mode. Even though we're not going to cut them. One point two five. Perfect. If we go into review, that's what we're looking at. That's the layout of our box. And again, because this is all in the Shaper system, it's all always synchronizing. And so Jake can pull that up on Origin. Uh, easy peasy. I'm going to hop over the Origin screen for us. Import should be right at the top of the list. Blanket. Bam. All right, I did my best to make a uh, grid off of the edge of foam, mm -hmm. which is not necessary, but close enough. Close enough. And let's rip it. Cool. Going all the way down to the final depth. And I'll see you on the other side. Nice. So what we usually say for hardwoods is go about a quarter inch at a time if you've got a quarter inch router bit. But this is foam. Foam's soft. And we've got a long router bit with a long cutting flute. And so Jake is actually going to cut this thing all the way down to depth in one pass. Um, this is using that quarter inch by one and a half inch O flute router bit, which is great for foam, great for these sustainers. Um, and I actually had a fun time with this router bit last night. I was in here working on a personal project and I stacked up three half inch boards of plywood that I all needed cut exactly the same way. I clamped them together and I routed through all three boards at once with this inch and a half O flute router bit. Not all in one pass, of course, in a bunch of passes, but auto pass made it nice and fast and easy to cut through that whole one and a half inch depth with this router bit. So I had a really great time with that. Um, Jake's really ripping out this pocket here. Uh, the fun thing about foam is that there might be a little bit of fuzziness that we have to pick out at the end, sometimes it folds over on itself a little bit, but it does come clean really easily. Uh, and after he's done with the pocket, I think he's going to do one inside cut just to clean it up. We're looking pretty good to start. Gonna swap that over to that inside cut, and this will give us one nice clean edge profile. And because we combined this tool profile with that circular cutout, it's all going to be cut together all to the same depth. Uh, if you wanted those to be separate, you could assign a separate depth to the circular path. Uh, maybe, for instance, if you wanted that to be shallower, or maybe there's a case where you want it to be deeper. Like, uh, you know, for a ruler, to pick out a ruler, you would probably want the circular finger pull to be deeper than the ruler. If you had a really deep, like this hand plane, for instance, I think we could have gone shallower on this finger pull. It's all about the details, folks. And as Jake's coming around here, Origin is sticking right on that line, and it's giving us that exact profile that we traced with Trace. How's that look, Jake? Thumbs up? Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's a good spot for that finger pull, too, because you Perfect. can get right in under that corner. Yeah. Let's show that on the uh, overhead cam. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very nice. Okay. I kind of want to cut the rest. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. The, the, folks, the folks have questions. The people have questions. Uh, so let's get to that Q&A. Um, I do want to say before we, you know, this is the part of the show where we transition from the show that we post on YouTube to the part of the show that's kind of off the record, the Q&A bit uh, and the giveaway, which we don't post later. So if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, please join us live. Um, we're going to try something new today, by the way. For everybody who's watching us live and for everybody who watches this after the fact, uh, 
we want you to try this stuff out, you know? Hmm. We've got a little homework, you could say. So if you've got Trace, um, sign up for that studio trial. If you have both already, then great, you know, do a project. But we want you to do something with Trace and Studio tonight, this weekend. You've got a holiday to do some crafts. Um, and post what you've made with the hashtag, uh, let's say, ShaperMade for now. Yeah. That's kind of our classic. And we'll know that you watched the show based on the kind of project that you did. Post this with a hashtag ShaperMade. And some of our favorite projects that people do based on watching this show, Trace plus Studio combo stuff, hashtag ShaperMade, we will show off in the mid-show break the next show that we do, give you a little shout out. How's that sound? So I want to uh, see some engraved hand see, turkeys. Yeah, engraved hand uh, turkeys. That would be <laughs> awesome. Do you do your turkeys this way where the head is the thumb, or do you do your turkeys this way where it's like the front-facing turkey? I didn't even know that was an option. Oh, yeah. The, these ones these ones always kind of weirded cla- me out. That's but classic. the tail doesn't actually go that way, you know, on a turkey. The tail really goes this way. <laughs> so... Up to you with how complex you want to get on that one, folks. But share that with hashtag ShaperMade, and we'll showcase uh, some projects on the next show. Happy holidays. Yeah. See you next time. Bye-bye.